Steve. Yep. So we've done 11. We now move to number 12, item 12, which is Regional Pest Management <coughs> Plan Review. This is Helen Sharp and Dr Imogen Bassett. Correct? No. Actually, my manager, uh, Jenny Fuller. <coughs> Centre of Loss Imogen in transit somewhere. She'll probably come and soon. Oh, OK. So you people are going to present on it, eh? Yep. OK. Yes, thank you, Mr Chair, and good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. So we're now moving into the area of, of pest management and the Regional Pest Management Plan. I have a short presentation of, of three slides to provide some context, but if you feel that you don't need that, it is a relatively so straightforward I think that is thing. A okay, useful. thank you. The chair is interested. I think everybody else will be. I'm very interested. In yes, with thank you. you. <clears throat> To set some context, uh, regional pest management plans are documents under Part 5 of the Biosecurity Act. So they are statutory documents. They enable regional councils and unitary authorities to provide for the eradication and or management of harmful organisms which are already present in New Zealand. They have uh, very strong rulemaking um, components and they are also used as a uh, means of prioritising pest control by councils. Our current strategy, uh, 2007 to 2012, so you can see that it's um, past its <coughs> use by date. It is still in force, um, but it is getting quite old now. So the plan needs an overhaul to respond to changes in the science, the operations, community expectations for pest control and also changes to the Biosecurity Act which put into force a document called the National Policy Direction with which all pest management plans need to comply. We're going about this by running a two-stage consultation process and the document that you have in front of you is to facilitate the first stage which is um, less formal, um, wide-ranging, open-ended consultation. The document provides an overview of pest issues, asks some questions around key issues in the Auckland region and seeks to engage the wider community in pest management. The responses that we get will inform the proposed pest management document um, which will be drafted uh, next year, early next year, and then we'll go to a second round of consultation, a stage two, which will be more formal and probably have a uh, hearings process associated with it. This is an overview of the process um, so that you can see where we are at the moment with the discussion document um, before you for adoption. There will then be a public consultation period which expires before Christmas. Um, we need to expand uh, to extend our current plan which we have done uh, several times in the past. We will then prepare the proposed pest management plan and that contains um, some quite comprehensive information on cost benefit analysis, um, cost allocation and other statutory requirements, interaction with other acts and other councils and we will put that um, before you for approval hopefully around the middle of next year. Another consultation process and then final approval and an appeals period in about 18 months' time, we hope. All right, thank you very much. Are there any questions on this one? Um, in this uh, management plan, are we, does this also include how to eradicate them? I mean, does it going to say you can't use a gun to shoot the swallows or things like that, or how is it going to actually... Generally, it doesn't go into that level of operational detail. There are operational plans that sit underneath um, that would provide that kind of information if it's needed. Uh, yeah, I think uh, generally it's an outcome focus rather than the, the method, methods underlying that outcome. Okay, and my second question is then, um, you said there that you're going to have another hui with Māori, with Mana in general. Has there been any one-on-one 
discussions because I do remember Nick coming out and talking to us like about two years or maybe three years ago. Nick Waipala. Well, when he was when this first came about because he said it had already expired. Yes, it, um, well, it, it was about to expire and then we extended it to, to keep it in force. So it's out of date, but it hasn't legally expired. Okay. Yeah. So, so my question was, are we, for you, Chair, are we going to have this one-on-one -on -one with, like, with the, like the groups that are in the Kaipa, for instance, or in, the, in Mahurangi? Yeah. There is consultation planned with, um, on a group basis and a regional basis, but anyone who is particularly interested and who, who wanted um, a one-on-one -on -one, um, presentation or talk um, is welcome to, to seek that from us as well. And we have already done some one-on-one -on -one conversations with, with a few iwi who've um, indicated interest in that, and we can certainly do more. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Walker? Yeah, I mean, this is... This, this is good, um, yeah. and I can see that you've got some um, examples and, and you look at individual residents and you look at um, communities. Um, a particular community that I'm involved with, um, the Whangapa Peninsula, has got a, a pest-free peninsula project. So initially it's targeting specific pests, uh, rats, mustelids and the like, but the idea is to expand that to all pests, and that includes plant <coughs> Plant pests. Um, it'd be biggest pest on the water. It'd be useful to to have some coverage of that kind of approach, because as much and all as you can approach something on the basis of an individual pest, from a community uh, uh, perspective, from a geographic perspective, that sort of concept has got a lot of merit. It is already the case with obviously islands and so on, of which there are a number, and it's expanding. And just taking it further, given that the progress so far, I wouldn't say it's exponential, but the curve is like that, we could have a pest-free New Zealand. I mean, that's the, that's the target. No. And I just wonder if it's possible to incorporate some form of <coughs> target in the kind of approach we have, a bit like the zero waste target that we've got, which is aspirational, but why not a pest-free target. Just put that out there. I wouldn't mind a response. Through you, Mr Chair, of course. In the content of the plan, um, all the pests need to be managed under one of five program types, and those are set um, by the legislation. And within those, you seek um, outcomes and methods. So it would be theoretically possible to put targets in there, but, I, but whether or not it's appropriate or that is better left to an operational document underneath because the plan generally needs to apply to the whole region. You can have some sites, but overall the main approach is by, by pest, by species, rather than by area. Um, um, Councillor uh, uh, Casey? Oh. I think, uh, sorry, we were I, going to have an additional response, I oh, think, Mr sorry. Chair. Sorry, could I just add to it through the Chair? Um, the the um, plan will also have a, a strategic function as well. So we have a regional leadership function. So as well as that species-led approach for rules, it would certainly be possible to have um, some some nod to, to the idea that there are... Um, areas that we might focus on, communities, um, things which are strategically important or that we might aspire to, well, that could definitely be, be acknowledged. So just through you, Mr Chair, does that process <coughs> overlay this or run in tandem with this? Because obviously you're going to be capturing information from, from people, they're going to be making suggestions, and as much and all as they might directly form part of this uh, process, they very much relate to it. Uh, yes, through the chair, that those um, comments can it will certainly be gathered through the same process. Yeah. <coughs> Councillor Casey. Uh, thanks. I've got a couple of questions. The first is, could you just enlighten the committee about how you're approaching the problem of cats? Um, through the chair, we uh, haven't chosen to explicitly raise this in the discussion document. Um, so this is a very preliminary document where we've raised a small number of high-level issues or things that we particularly thought would 
um, stimulate some public conversation, but we would certainly make it clear to people that the, um, we're seeking feedback that is across the board and not just restricted to those specific species or, or issues that are raised there. So um, we can definitely receive feedback at this point on cats. We're not, with respect to cats and, and indeed almost every other species, we, we haven't actually got to a point yet of determining a specific approach that we would have in mind. Um, that's, that's further down the track and we'd hope that this initial dis, um, public discussion phase will, will inform that process. Oh, it's just as part of the animal management bylaw, cats was a major issue and we kept telling the cat people that we would be looking at it through this regional pest management strategy and you've got red-eared turtles and goats and I thought cats would be right up there as one so of the issues for... You we know, to, did to give consider it, on. but we considered that it has already had, had some airing through the bylaws process and that also there is quite an engaged public conversation about it anyway, so we expect that we will get submissions on that from quite a number of parties. Um, so we've done some initial stakeholder consultation with organisations such as the SPCA, um, but also even, even with other stakeholder consultation that's <coughs> unrelated to cats, people do, people do bring up the issue of cats, not infrequently. So we expect that we, it's not something we need to explicitly excuse me, articulate in that document in order to elicit feedback. I'm not sure about that because I don't know that people associate pe regional pest management with cats. I, I, That's all. In my experience, they do. They do, we, all right. We definitely, all right, people you. are not backwards and coming forwards on their <laughs> opinion my, on that one. Just still on cats, will the submissions that went to the animal management bylaw on cats be looked at we under the regional pest management we strategy? We could certainly take them into consideration if that's desirable, I would think. Yes, we can. Um, I, our primary response um, needs to be to the submissions that we receive, but um, when we receive those and they raise other issues and we know that there's other material um, that has happened within Council that we can use, then yes, we will. All right, because we couldn't do anything with the cat <coughs> things that came in because we didn't have, we weren't looking at cats under normal management. <coughs> okay, that was a difficult one, but Pukeko, is that pest Pukeko currently on your list of pests? It should be, yeah. Shut up. It should be. <coughs> um, through the chair. Agrees, so <coughs> Through the chair, we are not considering any native species on our current list. Oh, but what was your strange. name again? <laughs> what a wonderful answer! They need culling. And You're the last an one was simply. The last one was simply. Um, there was a horrible incident recently involving a member of the public who poisoned a dog by putting a trap, poison trap, in a public place. Is the issue of public? Police trapping and poisoning covered in this? The actual technicalities of it? Um, through the chair, it's a similar answer to, to the answer to Glenn it's Wilcox's question. It, it's more about the outcomes that we want to achieve for any given species or site. It's, it's not about the, the methods through which we achieve that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cashmore. Oh, thank you, Mr Chair. <laughs> Thanks, team. <clears throat> um, so I'm not going to bore into a burrow here. But you're going to go out and talk to the general public, individually and groups, and you're going to get a lot of feedback with people with some very high aspirations of ridding all the roadsides of tobacco and, and privet, all the railway lines, and they're, they're great goals. Will that sort of messaging be tempered with some of the realities around the practicability and finances of some of these particularly aspirational goals? Yes, it, absolutely. It's a requirement um, of the work that we do that all the pests go through a cost-benefit analysis and that's quite a, a comprehensive process that we are um, also engaging external uh, specialist consultants on to um, basically give that reality check and make sure that, that the financial side, uh, you know, that it's realistic and it's doable. And in addition to the, the um, financial feasibility, we actually also need to look at the technical feasibility. So um, often people will say to me that we should be eradicating, for instance, woolly nightshade from the region, but we know that actually that's, that's not a technically feasible option. So there, there needs to be some balance. So through you, Mr Chair, so I heard that, I want some of that was the start of page, or stage two, you're doing that as part of this initial public consultation, the very broad one as well. It's including the front, the first phase one. Yes, yeah, so this, this initial phase is a, a okay, very Cool, broad, thank you. I misunderstood it, sorry. Are you Councillor Lee? Yeah, I, I, 
I wonder if, if, if the officers could tell me what they consider, in their expert opinion, would be the okay. leading environmental animal pest or the most damaging ecosystem pest Rabbits. in the Auckland region. I think that I'll, I'll let Imogen answer from her technical point of view, um, but the, I think that the the most damaging pest, it depends on the values that you're looking at. So um, in the plan and under the Act, you're considering economic values, environmental values, um, impacts on relationship between Māori and, and their culture and lands, um, health and <coughs> recreation. So. Um, some pests uh, have a greater effect on some values, and um, I'm not sure that it's possible to, to single one or two out and say that overall th those are the biggies. That's the answer? Um, yeah, through the chair, I think Helen's right that it is very context. Oh, I'd have to specific. tell you that the most damaging ecosystem piece is the ship rat, ratus ratus, but there's no mention of that in here. Um, and I think just as well Kiwi Rail didn't come and talk to you guys when they cleared all the weeds out of the Western Corridor, and they've done a brilliant job, but um, I'm a little bit underwhelmed by it, actually, as a document. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Uh, no other questions? Okay. Councillor Darby. The, the new section interests me is, um, is marine pests, and you're engaging on that, and that's been overlooked, too hard basket, too expensive, invisible, we don't notice it because we look at the surface and everything above it. That's been the approach bluntly in the past, but in the document itself you don't sort of, you ask the question, is it is this important, but you don't give any lead-ins as to some of the species of concern, well maybe it is there but I, I couldn't spot it, um, and I'm just wondering whether Aucklanders really need a bit of a, a lead-in, uh, because I don't think most Aucklanders would know of the devastation of the seafloor and shellfish beds that has been caused by invasive marine species. I'm just wondering, did you give some consideration to teasing that out a bit 